favorite professional developments that I've ever had was the thinking map course that we had. We tried to utilize non-linguistic representations to illustrate our students' thinking, but also to increase academic performance. You know it's good and effective professional development when there's carryover and transfer into your own personal life. I find myself using thinking maps even today. This is seven, eight, nine years after this professional development. Good stuff. This is a circle map. In a circle map, you define in context. So in between the bubble that says circle map and the larger circle, you would write varying definitions about a particular vocabulary word. A tree map provides opportunities to classify or to categorize. A double bubble map is a lot like a Venn diagram in the fact that you compare and contrast two differing topics. Utilizing a bubble map is an awesome idea if you want to describe a topic. In the outside bubbles, you would list as many adjectives as you can to describe that central topic. A flow map is used to illustrate the thinking of someone who wants to demonstrate sequencing in an event. A multi-flow map is used to show cause and effect. The causes go on the left side, and then the topic goes on the inside, and then on the right side comes the effects. A brace map is best used when describing whole to part. So this is an opportunity if you were going to describe what you're having for lunch, say you're having a sandwich, you can talk about the sandwich as your main topic and then talk about all of the parts of the sandwich in the subsequent blanks. A bridge map is a wonderful opportunity to demonstrate non-linguistic representations of word relationships. Bridge maps illustrate analogies. So this is a double bubble map right here. This right here is a comparing and contrasting map where we're comparing teachers and students. Now, what do teachers and students have in common? Well, they both meet at school. They both have families and they're both committed to education or being educated, both teachers and students. The teacher is a professional, which means they had to go to college and be trained to do what they do. They also get paid, students don't get paid. And this particular teacher gets a duty-free lunch, which means if I choose to eat by myself, that's my prerogative. That's what I can do if I want. Now, students, they uh, are not professional, they do not get paid, and they eat lunch with other kids. This is a bridge map. Let's talk about hot dogs. I know you would rather not talk about hot dogs, but this is what I put on my hot dogs. This is part to whole. So these are the parts, this is the whole. Wheat bun, spicy mustard, Nathan's brand hot dog only, relish and onions. Those are the parts, this is the whole. Bridge map. This is what is called a bubble map. A bubble map is used to describe. So here's my name, James, and here's some adjectives to describe James. Rare, unique, thoughtful, courageous, witty. My story, not yours. Five adjectives to describe me. This is a bubble map. This is known as a multi-flow map, and so becoming a teacher is gonna be our topic. If you have desire, that's the cause, you can affect or affect, make change. And a cause of becoming a teacher, patience, okay? But you will have a reward, okay? Next, a cause of becoming a teacher, education. You love education. So instead of becoming a student, you become the teacher. This is known as a bridge map. So this is an analogy. This is a word relationship that we build. James, me, a teacher, is to Tom Brady, a quarterback of the New England Patriots, as a student to James, is to a lineman to Tom Brady. Do you understand that? The relating factor here is football and education. Bridge map. This is a flow map. These are my morning routines before I go to school. First, I brush my teeth, then I shower, then I get dressed, then I eat my breakfast, then I drive to school. Flow map. This is a tree map. Tree map categorizes and classifies. As you can see here, this is Columbus and the voyages to the new world. As you can see, he made four voyages and I can add more pertinent information underneath each category if I so choose. Every good teacher facilitates their children, their students in their classroom with a tool belt, with tools to equip them to solve problems that this world has given them that says that they can't. They can. 
thinking maps offered many opportunities for differentiation, especially acceleration with some of the gifted performers and remediation for some of the lower performing students and for kindergarten, first grade. I think one of the biggest complaints of kids in the classroom, getting what is in here out. And how do you do that? Non-linguistic representations. The non-linguistic part means you don't have to write a bunch of fuddy-duddy to get your explanation out. You can explain your thinking with illustrations, which some of these left brain thinkers, that's what they need. Implementing thinking maps was an awesome opportunity for me to focus on the modalities of learning, specifically multiple intelligences, to activate my students' learning, to get the non-conformists, the non-compliant ones, the ones that wouldn't buy into what I was selling, to get them to buy in. 